I remember feeling changed after the courage it took to get off that merry-go-round and go fling that door open to someone who was terrifying. And I had seen her hit children before with paddles and make their ears bleed and noses bleed. This early encounter stuck with me and taught me that negative belief systems can be imposed upon us without our consent. This was a moment I learned I could stand up and challenge someone else when their belief was being forced upon me. The inspiration in this story should shake you up if I've done my job. Your belief is holding you back from what your heart most desires and your lack of courage is hindering you from taking action on what it is you really believe underneath that facade. And the facade is the pretending you're doing in your life right now. Perhaps you wish you had the nerve to do something about it, but you don't because of fear and not wanting to change or you don't feel like improving or changing. Hi, I'm Kay Wilder and if you're new here, I'm focused on getting you transformational results that matter to you. My channel is titled From Fear to Flourish and Everything in Between, and that includes teaching you how to manifest and reinvent your life by challenging fear head on with courage as your friend and mindfulness techniques in tow in order to live how you really wanna live on your own terms. To set the stage for the story in this episode, I was in a Catholic school at the age of 10 with formidable nuns as teachers, and I witnessed harsh treatment, which is the truth of their reputation back then in those years. Yet this story isn't about the severity of what they did. It's more of a standout moment where I had significant personal realization about belief systems. And I hope this inspires you because if a 10 year old can do this, you can do something more. So at the close of the school year, at the age of 10, I was scheduled for a knee surgery that was due to a lump that had formed on my knee from a mischievous game of baseball with my brother. The doctor and my parents informed me that I was gonna to have to be out of school and all activities for two weeks recovery time. On Catholic school, you attended mass every morning and church on Sundays, including Sunday school. There wasn't much room for attendance issues in the Catholic school, even with a good excuse. So I, as a 10 year old, felt the need to go discuss this. We'll call her Sister Grace. So I went to discuss this with Sister Grace, my homeroom teacher and primary authority on these matters at the school. Sister Grace was a teeny tiny woman in stature, reaching only about maybe four foot 10 inches. And she was small, but very mighty. Everyone feared her and she made certain that all children knew that she had ultimate authority above everything. Considering the strict attendance policy at the school and in particular with Sister Grace, I was feeling nervous about being told I was gonna to have to miss school and church. I felt like I needed to talk with her and my hope was gaining acceptance from her about my upcoming surgery and the rest period. I timidly knocked on her office door. She allowed me to come in and take a seat. I had a solution that I felt would easily be accepted by her with no problem. I was excited because I told her I had a solution. Even though I would not be able to attend mass for two Sundays in a row, I would be able to watch it on television for the next two weeks, so I wouldn't really miss church. And then considering I wouldn't be able to physically attend, I figured this was a no-brainer. Her response was downright frightening. In a growling, foreboding voice that felt almost demon-like, she said, you must always go to church and waved her pointer finger back and forth while stating this. I sat back in my chair because the gravity of her words sent shivers down my spine. It felt terrifying because she was a very strong authority figure with whom dominated my school life and my education. With my voice quivering, I tried to tell her my parents' guidelines and echo the doctor's instructions too. I was explaining that it wasn't up to me and that they knew best better than me, what I would need after surgery. Sister Grace repeated her decree. With her finger pointing and waving again, her voice more menacing than before, she said, you must always go to church. I tried one more time to reason with her and she simply repeated her mantra again with equal measure of intimidation. With a heavy heart, I ran out of there. I felt like I had adrenaline rushing through me from fear. I felt terrorized and I ran from her office, seeking solace out on the playground on the merry-go-round where I could gather my thoughts. I felt defeated, confused, full of shame, fear. I didn't understand. So I went around on this merry-go-round for a while and pondered what just happened. At, at that instant, I was wrestling with clashing authorities as a 10 year old and clashing ideologies. Who was the ultimate authority I was to listen to? The doctors, my parents? 
the nun, the church, God. I was confused. So as I went around in circles, I thought this over and over. And I, I also knew I could have confided in my dad or he would fiercely defend his pup with the nun, with unyielding determination. My dad called us kids his pups, and he was a big man who would protect us at all costs. So I kept going round and round on that merry-go-round alone, circling. There were no other kids at the school because I had stayed after to talk to Sister Grace. It felt like I was out there a very long time, but it wasn't dark yet, and the school was still open. I remember asking God, what should I do? And I circled, and I waited. And I just put out a very heartfelt feeling of really needing an answer. It didn't take too long when out of nowhere, a kind of a surge of steadfast belief in myself kind of welled up. It's like I had a knowing. All I know is that I felt like I needed to go back in there, back into her office, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna say or what was gonna happen. But I stopped the merry-go-round and stepped off and started just marching back into the school with some kind of, I don't know, energy. Like a, it was like a newfound stride in my walk. And I went back into that school and I faced Sister Grace head on with steely resolve. I didn't knock on the door this time. I opened the door and went back in and plopped down in the chair. And she was still sitting in a power position behind her oversized wooden desk that suddenly looked too big for her. And she looked like a cold-hearted, unhappy woman who wielded power and control over children for her own pleasure. In that moment, I did not see her as a person of God because who would talk to a child this way? I knew the difference between right and wrong. So as I sat down uninvited, I watched her face become sort of shock-filled. And I said this to her before she had a chance to say anything to me. I said to her, you are wrong. You can't take God away from me. I'm having surgery and I won't be in church. Surgery won't change God's love for me. Not being in the building of this church, that is not gonna make him love me any less. You're wrong to confuse me and treat me like this and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I have my own direct line to God and this church does not own that in me and you can't make me come here and tell me I'll go to hell if I don't hobble in here in pain after surgery. I got up. I looked at her and I walked out and for good measure, I slammed the door behind me. And I walked down the hall feeling terrific. This was a moment that I learned I could stand up and challenge someone else when their belief was being forced upon me. I also realized that other ideas were pushed on me that didn't belong to me to shoulder either, even some from my parents. It was like a realization from God or the universe came through me. I remember feeling changed after the courage it took to get off that merry-go-round and go fling that door open to someone who was terrifying. And I had seen her hit children before with paddles and make their ears bleed and noses bleed. I was afraid of her. So I realized I had to take charge of my own belief from then on. And I knew that I could because I did that. The power was within me to manage my own intuition, to act on what was right from wrong when somebody else was gonna try to make me feel that something I knew deep down inside wasn't right. It was not only my right to stand up for it, but it was my duty to myself. And after that day, it kind of went that way for my parents too. I really learned a lot that day about how I was willing to get in trouble and put things on the line for right and wrong and stand up for myself and open my mouth, even if it meant getting punished. In the case of Sister Grace, she never approached my parents. She had met my dad before. He was a kind, gentle soul, but he was a man you didn't want to mess with. And he would have no problem standing up to this nun or the entire school system and rock the boat further. That's just who he was. Here's the thing, the 10 year old can do this. As I entered adulthood, I held tightly to understanding that my beliefs were uniquely mine and not anyone else's. Because of this encounter, I learned to think for myself and question what was being placed upon me, even through those early preteen years and teenage years and from then on. I began questioning things that had been told to me. Were these mine? You know, my mother had scarcity, lack mentality that she placed on her kids. I did not want that. I did not want to believe that way. But because I had the courage that day, my small self grew up to be a pretty courageous person. This single act of courage that challenged these concepts that didn't make sense to me, I adopted the attitude that I can change anything if I want it bad enough. 
This firsthand knowledge was proof that what a belief does to you when it doesn't feel right and that you have the right to challenge it at any time at any age. I learned from this little act that day that I had the courage reserves in my vault giving me the energy to confront that nun. If I could do it at age 10, I knew I could do anything in the future. This early encounter stuck with me and taught me that negative belief systems can be imposed upon us without our consent. If they go unchallenged, they will remain a part of your subconscious mind until the day you die. Unless you stop them and change them, you will stay the same for your whole lifetime. So as an adult, it's up to each of us to discern now what resonates with our values and discard what doesn't and change and shift and get better. Are we carrying them because it was simply taught to us? You know, life offers us the opportunity to change and update that which no longer fits. After that school year, I made the decision that Catholicism was not for me. And I would need to explore and broaden my spiritual knowledge and awareness and learn what was right for me. My mom has remained a devout Catholic, even though I fundamentally disagree with the shame and blame part of that religion that I experienced. You can take action on any belief that you have, no matter who gave it to you. Limiting beliefs are not good. So ask yourself now, have you ever taken a moment to reflect on your beliefs, really write them down about each different area of your life? Have you honestly questioned what you believe and is it serving you? Was it put there by somebody else? And when you were young and didn't feel that you had the choice in the matter, are you unknowingly bolstering those beliefs by vehemently defending them despite never giving them a second thought or, or consideration? Things like, I follow in my dad's footsteps. It's how I was raised. Money doesn't grow on trees. Eat all your food because they're starving children in Ethiopia. Never understood how eating my plate was gonna help them, but okay. These particular beliefs were imparted upon you does not imply it must stay with you indefinitely. So I tell you this story today because the keys to change is being willing to free yourself to become who you are and how you can express yourself in this world and what beliefs are stopping you. I've created a special download for you for free, just for you, my friend, that you can privately go ahead and take a look at your beliefs. I want to help you get past where you are right now that's still holding you back because you deserve more. There is more in this world and your future self that's waiting for you to clear the way so it can come into your reality. So download that free PDF that'll be changing your limiting beliefs right now today. And you will see things change, I promise you, once you take these steps. Everything is possible for you. Watch the next episode on manifesting money that continues on with these belief systems and the next steps. I told you this story because I hope you know that if a 10 year old can be this courageous, you can be courageous too and take a look at what might be holding you back today. I thank you for subscribing and I look forward to your personal comment today.